My name is Chad Hansen. I'm a professor of philosophy at the University of Hong Kong, where I've been teaching Chinese philosophy for about 25 years. My special areas of research have been in Chinese logic and philosophy of language, particularly as they help us to understand classical Chinese Taoism. Today, I want to introduce our online course titled Humanity and Nature in Chinese Thought. The course provides an introduction to traditional Chinese ethical thought and focuses on a pervasive contrast between the way Chinese and Western thinkers talk about ethical guidance, that is, guidance about right and wrong, good and bad. We make behavior guiding right-wrong judgments all the time, but have you ever wondered where they come from, what they are about, and why they are important? The traditional Western orthodoxy explains where ethics comes from, what it's about, and why it's important, relying on the metaphor of a law. In its most familiar, popular form, the command of a supernatural being, backed by the threat of eternal punishment or reward. The classical Chinese philosophers, by contrast, were all naturalists. They talked about ethical guidance using a path metaphor, a Tao. We will look at two rival directions this natural Tao model took in ancient China. The first direction views ethical paths as generated naturally from human sources, what Western fundamentalist theists would condemn as secular or godless humanism. There are two Confucian versions of the human origins of moral guidance. One of these, the version attributed to Confucius, treats ethics as arising from human history and past social practices. The behavior of past models leaves tracks in our traditional social practices. We learn these from imitating our elders' performance and in turn teach them to our children. Thus we transmit them from generation to generation. The other Confucian version views guidance as arising from a distinctively human guiding organ, something like a combination of our faculties of heart and mind. The organ issues the right-wrong, or this, not that, judgments naturally. This internal map to moral choices branches naturally like a plant as we mature. This is the version we find in Mencius. The alternative to humanism in China was to treat normative guidance as natural in a broader sense. Our human practices of walking trace natural paths like those of water. This theme in Taoism was made most popular by Lao Tzu. Another version sees the natural path as one driven by a natural standard of judging implicit in all forms of life, preferring benefit to harm. This is the version favored by Mozi, the ancient rival of Confucius. Another naturalist, Zhuangzi, accepts our commonality with other animals and repudiates the distinction between human, whether social or psychological, and natural Taoists. Humans, as natural creatures, adapt to the circumstances of their environment and their capacities, as do all other natural creatures and forms of life. The right way to behave emerges naturally, responding to the circumstances and capacities of each of us. Finally, we will take a very brief look at a development after the classical period. It results from the invasion of the more supernaturalist Indo-European way of thinking about guidance, medieval Chinese Buddhism. We will look at how it was adapted to form a naturalistic distinctively Chinese version of Buddhism known to us today as Zen. In Chinese, it's called Chan. We will explore how to understand Zen meditation as a form of naturalism. For those who are beginners in philosophy, we will include a very brief introduction to the ideas of logic that further shape the Western metaphor of law and help us understand its role in Western ethics, science, and psychology so you can better understand the different way these two metaphors work to explain where norms of behavior come from, why they are important, and what they are about.